Welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? Although lately I've been doing it the opposite. Have you noticed that? I've been so I'm talking about writing and then reading. And today we're going to talk about songwriting and singing and all kinds of things for my, my very interesting guest. I hope you know that I'm Karen E. Osborne, author of Getting It Right, Tangled Lies, my new murder mystery that came out this year, and Reckonings, which comes out next June. And my guest today is Casey Lansdale. Did I pronounce that right, Casey? Nailed it. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> All right, good. And let me just tell you just a little, like a little bit about Casey, because her resume is like this. I'm just going to give you a little taste. So she is an American country music singer and songwriter. She is also an author, an editor, an actress, a producer, as well as the host and founder of East Texas's Songwriters Workshop. Welcome, Casey. Thank you. Yeah, that's when you say it like that, it makes me sound like I've been doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it also sounds like you'd be like 60 years old to accomplish all that. And I'm looking at you. This is pretty impressive. So you. when you think about all your artistic pursuits, all the things that you love, you know, that you love doing and all of your accomplishments, what gives you the most satisfaction? What are you proudest of? Well, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, actually, you know what? I'm proud of all of them because they all require different uh, skills. They all come from different places from within. So singing and songwriting is probably my first love. So I would say that that's the thing I'm most connected to. But I grew up in a creative household. I grew up in a family of writers and editors. So it was just natural that I would transition from songwriting to fiction writing. And then as you kind of um, move, evolve or devolve, depending on how you look at it, into that world of, of creativity, you're presented with all these opportunities. And so therefore you write a script. Well, sometimes you have to be involved in making that script happen. And, and so then you turn into a producer. And so you, you wear many hats as a creator. And uh, even if you're not switching the art form that you're doing, even as a writer now, you're doing publicity, you're doing your, you know, your first passive editing. There's so much that we as creators have to take on. And so it just sort of comes naturally that those skills develop. Yeah. Um, is songwriting and, well, tell me about your writing. What kind of writing do you do? Well, I, for songwriting, I always kind of compare it to a, a flash fiction piece. So it's a, it's a three minute story that you have to tell from top to bottom. And I think that's the beginning of my sort of love affair with writing was telling this story and telling it in a way that's song. Because so many, I mean, if you think of like the, the Dylan cuts and so many of the, the great uh, songwriters, a lot of that was poetry and they just put it to a melody. And not all of it, but there's so much of that that is just, oh, I heard this hook or I, and I want to write this story around this one phrase. So the songwriting was the, the natural thing that as a singer, you have to have material. So therefore, as I start moving into more of a writing piece, I end up doing more fiction. And then I start with flash fiction because that sort of feels natural. And that's hard. You know, it's hard to tell a story in, in under five pages yes. from top to bottom. And the more that you sort of hone that ability to write shorts, the easier it becomes to write those longer pieces because you understand that each chapter is a little short story within itself and it's contained and then the thread works all the way through. So it's just sort of uh, the thing that made the most sense was to just start with the thing that I love and came naturally, which was the singing and the songwriting and then let it work its way out from there. Yeah. And uh, so short fiction, flash fiction, did you, were you also a poetry writer and also a short story writer? I was never a poet. Um, I would say that maybe if you consider the songwriting, the poetry, but that was never, that was never something that I would say, oh, I definitely write poetry. Uh, and the short stories kind of came about just because I grew up in that environment and there were opportunities presented to me, even as a young child, of if you want to write this story, sometimes with my father, who's a writer, sometimes independently. And then the more you do it, you know, it's, it's like going to a gym, it's a muscle and you work it and you get stronger at it as you go on. 
Yeah. So you flashed a book when we first came on. The audience didn't see it, but I saw it. So lift it up again and tell us about it. <laughs> well, this, I happen to have it so handy right here. Um, this particular book is actually a collection that I did with my father. And it's um, the Dana Roberts case book of horrors. Terror is our business. There's other things that uh, I've written with him and alone, but this is probably the thing I don't want to say that I'm most proud of because I'm, I'm proud of all of the work, but this is the thing I think that has the most special place in my heart because it was with my father. So it's, it's a, it's a character that he had named Dana Roberts and I had a character named Jana Davis and we ended up putting them together in the same world and his stories had started about a decade before mine. So we never anticipated it. And you know that because we wouldn't have named them Dana and Jana. And we would have made it like, Sue and, and Betty, you know, <laughs> just something that rolls off the tongue a little easier, but it's sort of a, a, a Rizzolian Isles meets Supernatural collection, and we've written them for Sherlock Holmes collections, we've written them for our own collection, and it's just sort of this fun way that I'll always have this story, both figuratively and literally, that I did with my father. And, and there's something special about that connection of family and the, the threads that go through it. So that is. that is that is a lot of fun, that collection. It's different stories, different novellas, shorts, and we just put it all together. Wow, how fun is that? Um, so when you think about your artistic journey, uh, you've given us a taste of it that it started with songwriting. Did it start with singing and then songwriting? Definitely singing. I, I mean, I remember as a kid, I would be downstairs and I'd be singing and then my parents would come down, turn off the radio and I, I'm singing. And they're like, oh, okay, go ahead. You know, even though it was late because they didn't want to ever discourage me from what I, I love doing. So the singing was the, the beginning. And then as I started playing gigs, there's, there are people who play only the cover shows and that's fine, but I knew that wasn't what I wanted to do. I love doing covers and I love sort of doing those um, songs that are the songs I grew up listening to and that I love, but I also like telling my own story through song. Mm. And, and were you always interested in country music or did you like other genres? Mm. Well, I would say my two favorites are the 60s Motown and Soul and the country of the 90s. And so I listen to less country now, and it's sort of been, I won't say a crisis of identity, but there's been a lot of change within my music and the way that I write and the way that I sing within the last 10 years, but specifically the last five years. And I don't know if it's just that I've reached the age where I'm like, back in my day, country music, <laughs> was, you know, I, I don't know if that's what's happening or if I'm just not connecting with what's going on now. And I imagine it's a little bit of both. So um, I've sort of transitioned into closer to maybe like a cabaret Americana kind of vibe. And so I'm still trying to pinpoint what it is because for so long, all my life, I've said country singer, country singer, and now I'm finding a new niche. And actually, um, March 13th, 2020, I launched a new band called the Ocean Airs and it was sort of a jazzy cabaret style. And then the next day the world shut down. So mm -hmm. I haven't really got to explore where that's going but I kind of felt like that was hitting closer to what spoke to me now. And it started because I had a country residency and my drummer and I both started talking about the music that we loved. And it was the Jerry Lee Lewis and the Sam Cooke and the Otis Redding and just all of those songs that I was listening to that my parents were listening to. And, and those are the songs that sort of started that revolution and that's kind of what I wanted to go back to, sort of that throwback sound, but also staying true to all the roots of my raising and my country influences as well. Wow, that is wonderful to have. So are you a full-time artist? Is that what, you, you know, do you do other, I, other things? Well, I do all kinds of things because I'm a full-time artist. So that's sort you of the, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, this is not the nineties where they give you $500,000 up front and then they don't care if they lose it. You know, there was a time and I would say like mid late eighties to late nineties, there was very much like, here's $250,000, go make a record. Or, you know, here's $500,000 for this new novel. And, and that's just not the case anymore because that's, it, it's just changed. And there's so much that even if you are a full-time worker as an artist, 
you can't just do one thing for most people. There are the few rare exceptions that they have a bestseller and they come out and that they write one book every, you know, two years. But even people I know, like a friend of mine, Ann Perry, who is a very accomplished fantasy writer, she's writing three books a year and she's a best-selling author and she's known around the world, but she's, she's keeping steady. She's keeping that turnout. And so you're always kind of putting that out there. And then as you're doing that, you're hoping that maybe Hollywood notices and maybe they pick up for a show or a film and, and, and you're just kind of doing all of those things and juggling all of those plates in hopes that you find a broader audience, because as you continue to grow, you can kind of do less on the outside and hone yeah. more in, but in the beginning, especially it's, and also just as you kind of are learning who you are as an artist, you're, you're trying all kinds of things. You're throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what sticks and seeing what feels authentic. And then as it kind of falls off and the layers peel back, you sort of understand who you are as an artist, as a writer or a singer, whatever it is. It just, it takes the time it takes. And sometimes that's not always beneficial in the creative world because kind of as we were discussing a little bit before, there is an image of if you're not 21 and out with your new bestseller, then you're not hitting it. But that's not really how life works in most ways. And most of the people that I know that are successful in the publishing world are people who started, typically I'd say started really around their 30s and then started to really pick up steam. And I, I mean, I use my father as an example. He's been a full-time writer for almost 50 years, but I would say the film and the television and all of those kinds of things didn't really come about until the last decade. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's even the first thing that I had filmed was something that I wrote as a child with, with uh, my brother and my father. And that took over 20 years to get on screen. So if the trajectory is right, you know, then, then by the time I'm in retirement, I'll have some things on film because that's just, that's the way the industry works. You know, it moves at a glacial pace and you only hear about the exceptions. Yes. And uh, that's why I think sometimes it's skewed because what we know is that everybody is grinding and grinding and, and just kind of hoping for that break, whatever that means. And that break might be a big break, or it might just be that, hey, I can do this one thing that I love to do and support myself. And the, they're all beneficial and they all, you know, as long as you're getting to do your art, then I think that's all that matters. You know, you say and support yourself. So my husband <laughs> said to me when I got my first, very, very first royalty check, and it was only $300 and it was the first one. And I was so excited. And he said, oh, so now we're only $10,970 <laughs> in the whole, you know. But you know what? Here's, the, here's what I'll say to that. You've got a royalty check. A lot of people don't even sell out of their run. So I have, you know, I get royalty it's, it's, it's all perspective. And yes, it is hard. But if, if we broke down the amount of hours that we spend learning the craft, doing the craft, we'd never make our money back. Yes. And Marty. I mean, Mark, yeah, marketing, all of those things, all of, the, you know, just learning how to run a website, all of those things yes. that were not normal. I mean, now they're kind of every day, but 20 years ago, they weren't, they you know, good. learning social media. Well, even less even than today. Ago. So we're, we're constantly putting in the time and the hours. So I think you never really make your money back on your investment, but you don't really do it you for do the it money. For yeah. It, I mean, we would like the money, but you do it because you can't not. I guess you do it because you can't not. So are you working on something now? I, as a matter of fact, I am. Uh, I've got actually for the writing side, I've got three short stories. Um, one is due in January, so I need to work quickly. And uh, I have one due in the summer and they're all, and, and one other that I've just wrapped up for another collection. And they're all for different anthologies, different collections that um, they solicited and just said, hey, do you have a story you want to write for this? And uh, I said, sure, how much time do I have? So the, the writing side has kind of been picking up more lately, especially because during pandemic, I wasn't able to perform. So I sort of focused in on what I was able to do. And this collection, The Terror is Our Business, I actually, with my writing partner, who um, we write scripts together, mm -hmm. she and I started a podcast. So it's sort of like the 1930s, The Shadow. 
and it's these characters and it's fun. And we, we, you know, we made all our own Foley and um, just finding different ways to use the, the characters that we have that were fun, especially during pandemic, because even as you're writing and writing and writing, sometimes you need a break from that and you kind of need a a fresh perspective. And, And so normally when I need a break, I go do music and then I couldn't do music in the same way. And so I started that um, podcast with her. So just uh, different, different outlets for the creativity have presented themselves. And now in this day and age, we have all the tools at our fingertips. Yes. You know, if, if you and have a lot from our homes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now what's amazing is it's, it's acceptable to do it from home. You know, I know for a long time, I'd say the first 10 years of my adult life, it was like, well, you work from home. So you've got all this time. And I'm like, I work from home and all I do is stare at this screen and I'm either writing or I'm recording or doing all of, you know, the traveling, the touring. So um, it, it's been kind of nice to see everybody transition and sort of learn that discipline of working from home, because I think a lot of people realized, ooh, I like going into the office because it's structured and it's harder than it seems to make yourself get up every day and do the thing you're supposed to do. Exactly right. And not get distracted. At mm-hmm. all. So one of the things we like to do before we wrap up is to get recommendations. And since we're a reading and writing, um, but you could recommend a song if you like to, uh, but, or, or an artist, but do you have some recommendations for our audience? Uh, well, yes. Okay. So very general, I am right now reading the new Michael Connelly book. I love Connelly. I do too. Um, it's so fun. And, uh, so right now, I think it's the dark hours is the newest yeah. one. I'm a third of the way through it. So I always, uh, I always think of him as a really good recommendation because I think if you're into crime fiction, he's a, a safe place to go. Mm-hmm. I would be uh, remiss not to say to check out my father, uh, who just had a new book come out called Moonlit. Actually, this is not planned, but I so I happen to have this here, Moon Lake. Um, this is my dad's newest book, and it's got a sort of a Boo Radley, Kill a Mockingbird vibe to it. And I think that that's a really fun one. It's also a good place to start. More concentrated sort of um, maybe genre, if you will. Uh, Brian Keene is a fun sort of, uh, let's say campy horror writer, but I mean that in the best way. He's got these fun sort of... Um, grotesque tales that are always interesting to cover Christopher Golden who's a great writer and more horror and uh Bracken McLeod great writer it, it, it just I could do this a lot so I'm, I'm trying to keep it tempered but yes. Yes. <laughs> let's let me stop there and then and then with the music you know who I've been listening to even though he's not necessarily new he's not old is Leon Bridges and and that's he's sort of been on my uh, my loop, Edith Piloff, uh, French singer. So these are not necessarily new people, but these are kind of people who've been on my, my radar as of late. So there, there's a few places to, to dip the toes. Yes. But if anybody wants to have that conversation, they can find me anywhere, social media, email, whatever. Yeah, so it is. tell I'm us, how could they, where could they find uh, you? Good. Well, my, my Good. website has all of it. It's caseylansdale.com, K-A-S-E-Y-L-A-N-S-D-A-L-E.com. And I'm on there with Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, you know, smoke signals, whatever it is, you, I'm very easy to find. And uh, I always love to hear from people and I love to hear, oh, I heard you on Karen's show or wherever it is. So don't be shy, reach out and uh, let's be friends. Oh, that is wonderful. Thank you so much, Casey. This has been such a delight. And I thank all of you for watching and listening. And I hope you will reach out to Casey and uh, and look for all of her many, many, many things that she does and let her know, let her know what you've listened to or read or if you have a question for her. And until next time, this is What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? And I'm so glad that you spent the time with us.